too. What's going on, man? It's preaching. So I'm at a Walmart here, right? Delivery. You remember when I said that when I get up here, I got about three hours before my delivery, and I was going to try to change that air fitting that's on my transmission that I thought was leaking. Well, it's not, it's not the fitting that's leaking. It's not the fitting. It's actually the slave valve itself that is leaking air on it. Now, I can't do that on the side of the road. I don't even have no slave valve at all. So I'm going to have to take that to my mechanic. Now, it's still up under the year warranty, so I don't have to pay for nothing. And I looked online, the slave valve was about like 200 bucks, you know, so it was about like 200 bucks. So I don't have that to worry about because it's all up on the warranty. My mechanic said, yeah, he's going to take care of it. But while I was under there doing that, I noticed I got another oil leak. So I'm trying to find this oil leak, right? I'm like, man, can't be none of that. It's not the real main seal because I got that stuff done. I had uh, replaced the... um gasket my, uh, my oil pan gasket so it wasn't that so i'm like man where's this oil coming from so then i go look open my engine compartment up and i'm looking and i got oil and stuff all on my own um, my power steering pump and it's oil going down that rail part of it and oil all on those lines and then i look at my accessory drive i may have said this before because i thought it it was leaking or something like that but i wasn't sure but so what I did that time was I had cleaned it all up, got the, the greaser, sprayed it, I cleaned up everything, right? So and then I didn't see another oil leak. So I was like, well, okay, it could have been like the rain water up under it that got got some dirty water, whatever, whatever. You know, I'm not really paying attention to it. But this time after I cleaned it up, now I look and now it is definitely the um my accessory drive seal that it's leaking so i gotta get that fixed that oil leak fixed and then i gotta get this air leak fixed now i already had my um piston jet nozzles that was the wrong size um that i got to get that replaced too but that's nothing so i gotta get that fixed too right so i'm looking at some little maintenance that i got going on mm -hmm. that i need to get done so he says it's gonna be about 350 to 400 bucks to fix the accessory drive. And then uh, they got on my belts again. So I got to, um, I'm gonna change out all my belts. And then on my bracket, on my air conditioning, uh, when this dude was um, working on it, I believe he over tightened the bolts cause one of the bolts is broken in it, right? I think he broke the rope and didn't say nothing. This little jitterbug that I had to um, show how to do some stuff. Because he didn't know how to replace the idle or pulley. Tell me, well, he can't get to it. They can't, they're not going to be able to do it. I said, why? Because you don't know how to do it? Get somebody else that know how to do it then. Then they got the other dude. And he came out, well, we're going to have to remove your AC bracket to get to the idle or pulley because this bracket is blocking the boat to get to it. I said, so y'all don't got all the tools and the elbow joints, adjustable el elbow joints and stuff for your um, sockets and nothing like that? Nah, we don't got none of those tools. And they do light repair. They're not like a major place. They do light repair, all right? So but to me, that was a light repair, man. There's only one boat to replace the idler pulley. You know what I'm saying? One boat. And there's the adjustable boat is on top. And then the one boat you got to um, loosen is behind. But they didn't have nothing to get to it. So they had to move the AC bracket off. Take that off to, just to get to that boat to change the idler put it. And I already had an extra idler put it. You know, so so we had that. So I believe when the jitterbug put the stuff back, he, he broke the boat. And then didn't say nothing about it. Because now when I'm looking at everything, I'm like, man, is the boat loose? Now twisted with my hand it was loose i like man and then i twisted and it came off and it was only about this long it was supposed to be about that long but it was like half the size i said so now i gotta get that boat retracted up out of there and put a new boat in there for the bracket i'm like man i should take it back to him and make him do it but i got so much other work little stuff i need to get done it don't make no sense really to um you know to um do that 
so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna have my mechanic do it because he got to replace that uh, slave valve that's leaking on the transmission, and then he can fix the uh, leak on my accessory drive. And then put in my new pistol jet nozzles for my uh, uh, cylinders, and then I stopped that particularly because I knew that one was leaking, so I wasn't, you know, I'm like, but it was an unusual amount of oil back then. I said, it shouldn't go this far back. I mean, it's leaking a little bit where you can see where the piston jet nozzles go into. You can see the little stream of um, oil coming out of it, but it's not that much, and I'm not using that much oil. Actually, I wasn't even losing two pints between oil changes of oil with those jet nozzles. But this time, when I checked my oil, I had to put in like a gallon of oil. So I'm like, no, this 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 is really somewhere. This really, re, re, really. Now it is time for me to change my oil again, which I'm doing on Monday. But the thing with that is between my oil changes, that's a whole gallon of oil now. You know, when it just used to be maybe a pint, pint and a half, but now it's a whole gallon because they got to be coming for the accessory drive. So I'm going to um, get get all that, get all new belts put on, get the accessory drive, get the slave valve on, and then I need a new evaporator for my air conditioning. I'm going to do that. And I checked my heat, and my heat wasn't working. So I got to get that checked out and find out why my heat is not working. Because you know it's getting ready to be cold again. And I go up to North Carolina, and I need some heat, man. I need, I'm going to need some heat with that. So I'm going to have them check out my uh, air conditioner. Um, I know I need a new evaporator. I know that, but I don't know why the heat and stuff. I'm not, you know, I don't know air conditions like that, to, to, to tell you that. It could be a lot of stuff wrong wrong with it. It could be a lot of stuff wrong with it. So who, who, who knows why it's not working? Who, who, who knows? But I'm going to do that. But since I know I got to get all that stuff done, I am going to be the recap king. So for the next two weeks, I'm going to run every single day. And then I'll run Monday and Tuesday, deliver that Wednesday. Then I'm going to drop my truck off on that Wednesday after I deliver. So he can have my truck Thursday and Friday. Saturday, they do light little stuff. On Saturday, they really don't do nothing time consuming. So I'm doing it like that to where that, you know, if they got to do something because of rain or because of what, you know, they can finish up on that Saturday. I start my contract on the 17th of October. So that way that week before, I'm going to put my truck in the shop. Have them fix all this stuff, go through everything, make sure everything is nice, spicky, and jiffy. You know, I already got new tires for my trailer. I see two more tires that uh, I probably would change before that time, too. I already got one tire. I got that at my house. So I buy another tire, and I just keep it at my house. So that week, I also can get the tires put on my trailer. So my trailer will have all new tires on it. I got all new tires on my trucks. I got all the brakes and everything. Brakes and stuff is good. We just gonna stop this here. air leak on my valve. That's uh, leak, leaking air. We gonna check for any more air leaks. Get that particular stuff done. So when I start off this contract, I'm starting off with my truck that then finished all this maintenance stuff. And we good to go. I got air conditioning, I have this. I changed one of my lights, my bright lights. It's not working on one light. I have the light, but until I need, I don't really don't use bright lights. But I changed that too. That's a DOT thing, so that's why I have to change it. So even though you don't use it, your bright lights have to work. One of them work, but the other one won't work. But that's a D, uh, DOT violation, so I get that change as well. So I'm gonna be on the ground for the next two weeks, man. Well, next three, I start on the 17th, so that week before, that gives me this week, next week give me two and a half weeks that i'm gonna work every single day and then that week i'm gonna work on half that week because even i though i worked half that week you know that's still 3500 bucks so even though i take off that wednesday thursday friday and get my truck back saturday i can start again on a particular sunday you, you know so i'll probably make about 35 four thousand dollars that week after taking those um four days off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday. If you get it done by Friday, that's good. I get a load on Saturday. 
but if not you know that's cool too i just start off sunday and get that load on, on sunday so I, I do it like that just so i can make some money going inside of my seasonal time i can afford right now to take about two weeks off and still pay all my bills and still be all right all right i want to get to the point where i can take off a month if i need to take off the money but truthfully i only can take off two weeks truthfully i only take it take it um take off uh two weeks because i just all my saved money went to fixing my truck the transmission all that other particular stuff that i had going on you know y'all see my old videos y'all know all that stuff that had went on so but, but so then i just didn't have that much time because of the rates i'm not able to save <laughs> a boat boatload of money i'm able to save some money but not a boat, boatload of money okay i'm not i'm saving about six hundred dollars a week after all the expenses and i get my money put money inside my maintenance account i'm profiting about six hundred dollars a week at this point that's what i'm doing so that's what y'all want to do the math for the month do the math for the month y'all mathematicians and stuff like that and i don't be worried about that but my profit after everything said or done is 600 that my business is making after i get paid the whole nine yards my business makes about 600 to 750 depending on you know my gross revenue for a week but my typical week my uh business profit between 600 and 750 bucks that's how much my business profit like i say I pay myself a salary. So I get paid. My business bills get paid. After everybody get paid, <laughs> my business makes. Okay? Y'all talk all this credit and all this other kind of stuff. You can have the best credit in the world. They want to see how much money your business is making. Is your business profitable? So you haven't made any profit in your business? How can we give you some money if your business is not profiting any money? I don't care if you got an 80-20 credit score. That's good and dandy, but you trying to get a business loan for your business when your business is not profiting any money. How do that work? You see, a lot of people talk about credit. Tell the whole story. You still got to profit some money, right? So you, they just don't want to see your P&L statement from your business. And they want to see if your business is profiting some money. Listen, I don't have no problem getting funded. I can show y'all the emails, the text messages. I can show y'all everything for all these funding companies that keep calling me want to give me some money. Why? Because my business make money. That's why. My business make money. And they see through my business tax returns that my business make money. So when your business make money, your business credit is good. You may not have a lot. I have about seven trade lines that I have that I've been having for the last almost two years now. I pay those bills on time. They, even though they see that, they also see that you, my business make money from my tax filing, which is public records. So I don't have no problem being able to get funded for my business if I want, but I'm not trying to get in debt because that's just another bill. Okay, that, that's all it is, just another bill. And by the time I put my truck in the shop again, I'm probably going to have between some parts because I'm going to get my drag link. I'm going to get that um, changed out as well. Apart from the spend about... I don't know, fifteen hundred, maybe two thousand on high end, on some uh, maintenance and stuff on the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Now, if I get a DOT inspection, they're gonna hear that early, and they're gonna, be, they may fail me. They may uh, put me out of service. Tell me I have to call somebody out to get that fixed, whatever, whatnot, because it's not gonna pass the brake safety check, all that kind of good stuff. But hey. That's a chance I won't have to take for the next two and a half weeks. That's a chance I'm going to have to take. You know, so I hope I don't get a DOT inspection. You know, because I won't pass it because they're early. It's, it is a noticeable early. And that I lose. Now, this is the thing. Like, when I was coming up here, the, you can hear the air leak, right? And like, now the air leak can stop. And it, kept, it keeps doing that. It's not leaking like that every day. But like every other day, every two days, it'll start leaking. Like it stopped and I, I'm gonna hold it great air pressure and it stopped the leak and you can't even hear no leaks. All right, but for some reason, it's the truck moving. Um, You can hear the air leak when I get to like a red light and stuff, but because the air compressor is, is working, I'm not losing air like that. 
to where that you know the air is going down it's still maintaining the pressure once the truck is on it just after i didn't park and went to the stop you'll hear it leak for a while in about two three minutes it'll shut off so the valve is working on and off for some reason i don't know if it's not closing properly it's not open i, I don't know what's wrong with it i just know hey my mechanic like they're still under warranty because you got a two-year warranty on it bring it back and he, uh, he's just going to contact uh willer what, what was it this right here i don't know it, it's back but it says uh really i had to get this off my transmission to give him the serial number and, and stuff for it but this is where i had got the uh transmission for him with the uh warranty and this was the serial number and i just had to get that uh take that off i couldn't see it so i had to take it off i'm gonna put it back on well i let him put it back on when he get back up get, get back up under there to get the serial number off so he can um order the part and everything for it so yeah so yeah this vehicle uh not vehicle but this video is going long it's like 16 minutes right now oh and then this walmart it says no parking on the street out here right at any time strictly enforced now even though that sign said that you know truck still gonna park there i still park there and i didn't park there a couple of times about two two hours two three hours right because just how the uh, the pickup time and the, the delivery time works so that's why it, it's, it's like that you know so i had about three hours before 5 30 so i can come up in here right my point was at 6 30 but y'all know walmart don't let you in for an hour early but i park way in front i was parking in the back i'm like no nah, i'm gonna have if they do so i'm gonna have the police get them before they get me right and i just keep an eye on it and just for show sure, about 520 man two police officers came up came up right behind the uh the trucks one came right on the side of the truck bloop, 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 bloop. Lit them up, man. Giving them parking tickets. Yeah, man, this is bad. And Walmart be like, you know what? They don't own that property. They didn't want to own that property because they didn't want to own the cleanup off that road. So now the city owns it, and the city is responsible for the cleanup. And you know how these nasty truckers are. These nasty truckers just throw their piss bottles and trash all over the road. They don't like that, so that's why the cops come about that. They don't do it all the time, but they doing it on this on Saturday, man. They getting them. They, they, yeah, they getting them, man. Two. I was like, cool. And I had like two more trucks in front of me. So I'm like, okay, let me get aired up. Now, it takes a little bit longer to air up because I got that air leak, right? So but my truck just don't air up super, super fast. Unless I uh, give it some uh, fuel, you know, and spin the motor more. So yeah, man. <laughs> I was like, well, I, just in time, man. Just in time. Yeah, just in time. But all right, this preach man hollering out. That's what's going on.